I'm sure at some point or another, this sort of thing happens to the best of us, where your nozzle and your heat brake don't really mate up properly inside of the heat block, and any tiny little gap allows filament in its molten state to ooze in between them, build up pressure, and then come out of the threaded areas of the heat block. Ugh. It's a pain in the butt, but it is completely cleanable without really using any chemicals, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, for this particular cleaning video, we are talking specifically about all metal hot ends, meaning there is a titanium heat break or a heat break of some sort, not just a Bowden tube butting up against the nozzle inside of the heat block, because that is going to be slightly different than what we're dealing with here, because that would involve uh, dealing with the heat sink as well. But uh, if you're using an all metal hot end, then this should be perfectly applicable. And it really shouldn't matter all that much which hot end it is. But uh, that's another reason why I like Micro Swiss and Micro Swiss clones, because they're super easy to take apart. You just heat everything up, pull the filament out, uh, undo whatever grub screws or whatever might be holding your heater cartridge in, poke that out, and then from the other side, poke out the thermistor, and then undo the grub screw, and then the entire bottom end of the assembly just pops out. It's super easy for maintenance. So uh, that's why I like Micro Swiss's so much. Maintenance is something you have to do eventually. And the less time you're dealing with the maintenance, the better. But let's go and discuss how exactly we deal with this. All right, so you all are gonna have to bear with me here because I am doing this with one hand because I need a tool in the other hand. So let's talk about everything we're about to do here. First off, Having the right tool for this job makes life a whole lot easier. And I get that not everyone's going to have these tools, but I'm sure there's something you can work up to get about the same idea with relatively similar results. Now, first thing is we need to remove the heat brake and the nozzle from the heater block. And to do that without damaging anything, we have to get everything up to temperature. Remember, everything loosens with heat. So because we don't have this connected to our 3D printer, we don't have access to using the heater cartridge and that sort of thing to get everything hot. The easiest thing to use is just a hair dryer can work, uh, these cheap heater guns I really like, you can get these at Harbor Freight for dirt cheap or Amazon or something. And what we're going to do is we're going to blast the entire thing with heat. And that will allow us to unscrew everything. It's going to melt whatever plastic is holding everything together. It's also going to expand the metal so that it comes undone nice and easy. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right. So like I said, I'm doing everything with one hand here. So bear with me. I actually don't have my tripod out here for once. <laughs> All right. That should be good enough to undo the heat break. And you'll notice I've already kind of undone it a little bit. You can kind of do part of this up at the printer. If you have your heater cartridge still attached, but regardless, the result is the application of heat allows you to remove the heat break without destroying the threads on the heat block. So again, we're going to put a nice little application of heat right on the nozzle. So when you're dealing with a very particularly gooey situation here, applying heat while turning yields the best results. Sometimes the plastic is really just binding everything up way a bit more than it should. But again, heat and just a little bit of force, not a lot. Remember, you're dealing with soft metals, brass and aluminum, very soft. It's very, very easy to damage the threads as well as snapping the brass head off of its threads. So now we are left with this, and this actually isn't too bad. 
So we're going to go ahead and clean this up now. To get everything like as if it was brand spanking new, you're going to have to clean off the threads on everything of all the plastic. That means the threads inside the heat block, the threads on the nozzle, and the threads on the heat brake. And first, we're going to start off by cleaning the threads in the heat block. And to do that, we're going to be using this spiral cylindrical wire brush. This is the kit that I got mine from, and I bought them specifically for this because, yes, you want to use a brass one. This is about a quarter inch brass uh, cylindrical spiral wire brush. And this is going to fit just barely in there. And in fact, you'll see how it kind of contorted inside of there because I've used it several times for cleaning. But this is going to do a really good job and you're going to twist it with the threads or in the direction of the threads. Now you can do this process manually with a hand tool, but if you're very careful and you've done this enough times like me, you should be able to use a typical drill and just drill in the direction of the threads of the heat block. So, and yes, despite the fact that we are using brass on this wire brush, it's not going to damage the aluminum because we're not tapping the aluminum or using something hard that's going to, in, in a fashion that's going to alter the threads because it's in this wire brush style. It's just going to conform around the threads. And what we're really after is just removing the plastic that is covering the threads. So... Yeah. And like that, we should be good. So let's take a look. And huzzah. We have removed all of that gunk that was on the threads. It's basically like as if the plastic was never there. Now we have to do the same thing to the threads on this. So for these, we're gonna use a standard wire brush wheel. This next part, we're gonna be using a stainless steel wire brush because stainless steel is not harder than titanium. So let's see if I can get this on film properly. So you see there's a lot of plastic oozed up on the threads of this component. This is the heat brake. Getting it clean, but I'm going to want to make sure I keep this tight in this vise. This vise doesn't have like a little cutout for circular components, but it'll do. So we're not going to go too tight because although titanium is uh, strong, it is also brittle. It's kind of one of the trade offs. Okay, so that's mostly clean. There's a few spots that's got a little bit of touching up to do, but that's more or less how you do it. So at some point you're going to ask yourself, how clean is clean enough? And there is an actual answer to that question. You can safely say everything is clean enough when you can screw in your heat break into the heat sink by hand all the way till it doesn't go down anymore without using any force. It should go in like as if it was brand new. You see, I still got some gunk right down there. If I were to try and keep turning this, it would just damage the threads on the aluminum block. So we got to keep cleaning it. But you did see it went in pretty easily most of the way. But double check your work. If it's not clean enough to go all the way down and bottom out without using any real force, it ain't clean enough. Little tip. While you're down here cleaning all the plastic off of these parts anyway, take time to use your wire, or your wire wheel to clean off any plastic on the surface of the block. Yeah, it's not really going to have any effect, but should you be leaking again, you'll know for sure it's a new amount of plastic leaking through, not an old 
leftover amount should it uh, ever give you this issue again. So take the time, wire it down, get it nice and clean. Don't worry about the finish. The finish really doesn't matter. You just want to get the plastic off. So now that we've cleaned it up a little more, you can see by screwing it in by hand how far down we get. And let's say we have successfully bottomed the heat break onto the heat block. Brilliant! Now we just need to do to the same thing to the other side with the nozzle. Now you might be thinking, hey, it's a brass nozzle. Who cares? Just replace it. Well, yes, if it's just a cheap brass nozzle, go ahead and replace it. But if you're using something very expensive like a nozzle X, which is, I believe, made out of tungsten carbide, or like what I use, a Micro Swiss WS2 coated M2 hardened steel nozzle, those are like 20 plus bucks a nozzle, it would behoove you to clean the threads and reuse them. We've done everything properly. There should be no more plastic all over the metal surfaces on the outside of your heat break, your heat block, or your nozzle. Now, this nozzle is definitely going to be replaced because it's just cheap brass and going at it with a wire wheel probably hurts the brass because brass is softer than the stainless steel on that metal wire brush in this particular case because we're going at it really hard with a power tool. So the point is though that you should still be able to screw it in once you clean up the threads on any nozzle and it should go in just as easily as your heat break. If it's not, don't force it. Clean it more and try again. Don't force it. Always use minimal amounts of force because it doesn't take a lot. The recommended torque spec on micro, micro Swiss um, hot ends is only three Newton meters at the most. That's not a whole lot. So be very careful about that. So to christen this new hot end, I'm getting rid of the old brass one and putting in a genuine Micro Swiss M2 hardened steel nozzle. And everything should go in pretty easily, but remember your final tightening must be done when the hot end is hot, because if you don't, well, the metal expands once it's hot, and right now it's currently cold. So if you don't do that, the nozzle's gonna come loose, and uh, you'll be right back where you started. So remember, tighten it down when it's hot, not when it's cold, and remember, very little force is required. Three Newton meters is the max recommended torque by Micro Swiss. So let's try not to exceed that. Now here's a little tip about putting a Micro Swiss hot end back together. When you hot tighten everything down, don't do it with the heat brake attached to the heat sink. Remember, it's just a grub screw holding that thing on there. Instead, heat it up like this, and then you're gonna grab one end with some channel locks once it's hot, like so, and then you're going to use a wrench and you're going to tighten down the heat brake down onto the heat block. And then you're going to tighten the nozzle so it butts up against the heat brake. From there you can let it cool back down and then reattach it to the heat sink. That way you're not putting a ton of stress on that grub screw. And assuming everything has been done correctly, filament should now flow freely from your nozzle. No more blockages. Time to get back to printing, y'all.